shall we lift up our two hands and bless the name of the Lord again. For answered prayers today, give him glory. Give him praise. Lift him up on high. There is none like him ever faithful, ever reliable, ever, deli ever reliable, ever dependable. Give him glory and praise. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name in the precious name of Jesus Christ we have given thanks. Why don't you ask him to speak to you tonight now? There are certain things that comes and once in a while. There are others you just catch once and you live with it forever. Lord, send me your word tonight that will abide with me forever, that will keep speaking in my life forever. Send me your word tonight that will abide with me forever. That will be speaking in my life forever. Send me your word tonight. That will abide with me forever. That will keep speaking in my life forever. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Father God, reach out to everyone in this service tonight. Amen. Give each one of us an encounter of a lifetime. Amen. Rewrite everyone's story tonight. Amen. Let everyone present here that need healing be healed under the power of your word. Amen. One of the wonders of fasting is outbreak of revelation. Let every word that drops tonight explode in the heart of everyone. Amen. And by that explosion, bring an end to every trace of frustration. Yeah. Let every form of affliction clear the way today. Yeah. And let your name be glorified. Yeah. Empower us into next level spiritually. Yeah. Empower our prayer into next level spiritually. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. Commitment to any instruction is a function of one's understanding of what that instruction holds for us. Most of the time, people look at prayer as just a means of having our needs met. But we understand from scriptures it's far much more than that. Prayer does not just change things. Prayer changes people. Say with me, prayer changes people. And the more changes we experience as individuals, the higher our level of command with God. Prayer goes far beyond changing things. Prayer actually changes people. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his garments were white, was white and glistering. Okay, what a drama. And then verse 30. The Bible says, And behold, there are talked with them two men, which were Moses and Elijah. And verse 31, Who appeared in glory and spake of his disease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. And verse 32, it says, And when Peter and so woke up out of their heavy sleep, they were awake, they saw his glory. And the two men that stood by him, they saw his glory. Life was changed. And then, Master, it's good for us to stay here. He said, no, you just came to see what prayer does. How prayer changes people. And a voice now came to ratify the change. This is my beloved son, his level has changed. Hear him. Prayer changes people. 
Yes, it's great for things to change, but it's greater for people to change. Prayer changes people. And you know the story of Moses, how he came back from the mount and his face was shown. <laughs> they had to cover their face to behold them. Prayer changes people. So expect amazing changes as we engage in this prayer warfare project. I mean, uh, give me is okay, but change me is better. When one's level changes, is charged into next levels of authority. Change me, Jesus. Change me, Jesus. Change me, Jesus. You see, wisdom is about learning from everything you hear. There's a particular church in this country that's given to heavyweight prayers as the core doctrine they knew from the onset. Sometimes back, I got a brochure of one of them that passed into glory at 126 some three years ago. And then yesterday, I got a testimony of one of them that passed at 130. The barrier is this Friday. Hello. And sometimes last year, one of their former presidents came with us here at our prayer meeting. He said, I just wanted to see you. Amen. And still bubbling. I think it was one, one ten or something. Can't remember again. One, one fourteen. Okay. He was speaking in tongues and blessing the name of the Lord. I said, okay, he should say something to us. And he said something meaningful and powerful. What's happening? As you engage the prayer altar, you go from strength to strength. Okay, in case you don't know what that means from Psalm 84 verse 7. He said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of trouble. It's so important to know that prayer goes far beyond changing things. Prayer changes people. Prayer is a platform from where you build grace. You build up grace against the day of trouble. Strength is built against the day of trouble. For if your strength, if you faint in the day of battle, then your strength is small. So prayer is a platform for building up grace against the day of challenge so you can remain in command. Now, Pastor Adela came also from that platform and left at 114, going up and down and traveling at the age of 108 to dedicate new facilities. Prayer goes far beyond changing things. Prayer changes people. Every moment you log on the altar of prayer genuinely, enhances your level of authority with God. Just like in aviation, you are rated by how many hours you have logged in the air. Not the hours you log, talking around town. I'm a pilot. You know I'm a pilot? I've been a pilot before you were born. Okay. But are you a captain? No. Because since you have been a pilot, a theoretical pilot, you have been going about and talking theoretical things, you are not in the air, you are on ground. There is no pilot on ground. Pilot is in the air. We can't trust you, a dangerous man. So you need to make certain hours before you can imagine a captain. Somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Now, some people, their prayer content, since they believed, may not be up to somebody who got saved two weeks ago, who got the fire. And you are rated by how many hours you have logged, not how many hours you are present. Father God, I thank you. Amen. Let them finish on time. I have other things to do. Networking is waiting for me. Father God, I thank you. This pastor's own, his own is always longer. I know he won't finish on time. <laughs> Praise God. So all those hours are wasted hours who are on ground. 
you are not on the flight. You know some fellows at the airport, they know every plane going to everywhere. Excuse me, where are you going? Jamaica, okay, your flight. He doesn't need to look at paper, he, he knows it. He has never seen the inside of an aircraft. But there's no way you are going in this world. He knows the time, he knows when. He doesn't look at paper. He may not be able to read. Your own flight is 2.15. You are going by Qatar. What <laughs> of you? You are going by Malaysian Air. You, you are going by Jakarta. <laughs> he knows everything has gone nowhere. May your own not be like that. Yeah. Many of us need to recover the lost hours this month. You need to recover lost hours. It's not just uh, wear dress, good title, sit down. You need to recover lost hours. Has he recorded any hour to your account? Since this prayer warfare project began, you are the best judge. Has your voice been registered once since this operation 6678 began? You are the best judge. Prayer changes people. It changed Moses, and we all saw it. It changed Jesus, and we all saw it. When he finished praying the 70, I mean the 40 days prayer and fasting, he returned, and all eyes were fixed on him. His level had obviously changed. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit, went to the temple in verse 18 and verse 19. All eyes were fixed on him. Everybody couldn't tell. Where he got it from. And his fame went abroad all the region. Then all the country. And all over the world. Prayer changes people. So apart from going for things to change. Let's go for us to change. Amen. And the more we change upwards. The higher our level of command. On the earth. Prayer changes people. I was up on a day just waiting on the Lord and swimming in the book of Psalms. Came back in the evening and then felt led to visit a family that had been believing God for fruit of the womb. And as I was sharing with them how God is a final authority as far as fruit is concerned. On a coach, not on a standing chair like this, on the sitting, the regular sitting room, the man fell down. Why? I didn't touch him. No. The woman fell after her, but same month, became pregnant after 14 years. After 14 years, prayer changes people's level. Prayer changes people's level. My prayer is that you will not only experience change of things, but change of your person or changes in your person. Because today is, I think, is it 7 or 8? Okay. And this thing is going on to 31st. So you can make anything out of it if you choose to. Prayer changes people. Prayer changes people's level of glory or level of authority. Prayer changes people. It changes people's mentality. Prayer changes people. You get so close to God that your attitudes become God-like. Prayer changes people. Up to tomorrow, we have not got any title for Jesus other than Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, not his lordship, Jesus, his gracious, Jesus, his eminent Jesus. Prayer changes people. Your taste begins to die for things that are not like him. Prayer changes people. Changes your level of authority. Changes everything. By divine design, I once served under my own convert. What a blessing. And served faithfully, comfortably, without any trace of reaction without any mention that I led this individual to Christ. 
I passed the test. He said, boy, I changed your level. I said, listen. There are people who will climb the pulpit today and somebody will, not ever open his, will never open his Bible. No, it's not this kind of person who can talk to me. He comes to the cell, looks at it. Is this the cell leader? Oh, no, my And he walks away. My student taught me a scripture, 1987. That's uh, uh, Psalm 49 and verse 20. A man that is in honor and does not know it is like a beast that perishes. I mean, uh, <laughs> this, his name is Moses Akago. 1987, he was a Bible school student and were giving them, they were having practice, you know, uh, teaching practice or something. And then each one speaks for about five minutes. He jumped out. He said, today I'm going to be speaking to you on a man that's in honor and doesn't know it. It's like a man. <laughs> and I've been reading the book of Psalms before he was born. <laughs> but I never saw that. The more you are in his presence, the more you change to become like him. As you behold him as in the glass, we are changed from glory to glory into the same image as by the spirit of the Lord. That's what makes it work. Sometimes ago when we marched some zones, some of them lost their Christianity on the spot. I mean, they lost their faith on the Lord. Some will have said, I would rather go to hell. Simple. Obedience becomes a natural lifestyle. The more godly you become. The more godly you become. You, you just enjoy it. Because we, order will maintain from here to eternity. So the more you align with order, the better for you. If they ask you to stay in this place in heaven, you say you are not staying there, they throw you out. To the next heaven. Amen. This is just simple. Just simple. Do you know that until 1987, before I knew that when you are pastor in a church, then you call you a pastor. In our own time, there is no such thing. You know. Your name is your name, Brother David. Everybody just enjoying it. It's not like somebody a chief. He said, no, I'm not a chief. I'm a high chief. You, you didn't know? I'm call me a chief like that. It was the time the Lord spoke to me that, um, uh, and this is not a doctrine, this was a revelation, that, uh, you know, uh, the word reverend is the name ascribed to God in scriptures. And in the New Testament, we are only called these and these and these. Some fellow who are called reverend before are. Ah. So the new people that are coming out are me. We are not going to be pastor, pastor. The G who will redeem is called what? Is there no most pastor? Oh, pastor. Billy Graham recently they were referencing him and they said, Mr. Billy Graham said, Mr. what? If they call some people Mr. who are Dickens, you have finished yourself. They <laughs> email Mr. Mr. what? Are you a Christian? <laughs> okay. Um, Billy is now 97. And um, he's waxing strong and enjoying himself. It's not in it. There is nothing in those things. But in your standing with God. May there be amazing changes in everyone's life through this prayer warfare project. May our levels change supernaturally Amen. to the point that we become a surprise to ourselves. Amen. May it change our prayer life forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, um, the mystery of one line prayer is one mystery that keeps our prayer the fire on our prayer altar burning. Because in your seeking to speak more words, most of the time you wander away. You mention your prayer point only once and you are looking for what to say next. 
Not that there is any response yet on the one you have mentioned. But let's look at how it happened. Jesus came down and told his disciples, Can't you wait with me one hour? Matthew 26, verse 40. And he cometh unto his disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? And verse 44. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time saying the same thing. <laughs> Three hours saying the same thing. It's not about vain repetition. repetition. It's about the intensity of the demand. I'm not talking about vain repetition. There are those who are saying something that their heart is not even connected. But don't you ever think that much speaking is a factor for answered prayers. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 7. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Much speaking is not a factor for answered prayers. But rather, a one line intense prayer will deliver any prayer target. One line intense prayer. Jesus prayed that prayer to a point that we all knew that that prayer was answered. He was unruffled throughout the torture and the affliction for our redemption. I mean, you chop off the air of someone that was coming to attack you and then you still hear them. There you want the cross saying, Today you meet with me in paradise. His demand was practically delivered. Yet he prayed a one line prayer for three hours. So when we throw a prayer line, it is more than enough to engage you in five minutes. And while we call, just looking for what to say, as if you are arguing in the court, the courtroom, he, Lord, because you said this and this, I demand today that every new convert that you've given us since phase three began in January till date. It's your will that these fruits abide. Therefore, let them abide. Father, let these fruits abide in the name of Jesus right now. Wherever they may be, let your great hand, your everlasting arm, locate them and let your hand be upon them in the name of Jesus. Every one of them abides. No one is missing. No one is missing in the name of Jesus. You present. He prayed one line prayer. The living word himself so he has all the scriptures. He prayed one line prayer. The most anointed one. He prayed one night because he was anointed without measure. That to me is very significant to tell us that there is no point struggling with many words to speak. Make decrease on your demand and stay focused and intense on it. Stay focused and intense on it. Stay focused and intense on it. There you have people that before the five minutes is over, they are finished. They are finished in one minute. There is no intensity of heart. There is no focused demand. And so, they lose a prayer objective. Never again. Never again. It's a great mystery that we call here the mystery of one line prayers. Jesus have mercy. And Jesus have mercy. Have mercy on me, Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. He stood still. One line prayers. He stood still and said, come on here. What is it exactly you want? Your one line focused demand has arrested me. 
So when you pick any of those prayer points, you don't have to pray all of them in one minute. You stay and make focused and intense demand until you secure a response. Can I hear your amen? Yes. Until you secure a response. Until you secure a response. The charismatics have gone overboard. They will speak so much that God will be wondering what are they now asking for? What are they now asking for? Hannah was praying a one line prayer. Give me a man child and I'm going to give him to you all the days of his life. Give me a man child. Nah, give me a man child. Give me. They said, This girl, this lady is drunk. Eli said, put up your wine from you, my friend. And he said, no, you don't know what I'm praying. It's one line prayer. One line prayer. They couldn't hear her voice. Only her lips moved. And Samuel came. And he said, I've asked him of the Lord. Engaging the mystery of one line prayer. I've asked him of the Lord. I've asked him of the Lord. I've asked him. Of the Lord. One line prayer destroyed all the peace of Baal in the land. I've asked him of the Lord. I mean, he prayed and the fire of the Lord fell. <laughs> the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the sacrifice, consumed the stones, consumed the water. Water consuming fire. It came in response to one line prayers. Now, any convert of yours who are praying for, you get them. They will be so established. We are calling you. Aren't you going to church today? I'm already near the place. So, <laughs> so they'll be following you up. Now, let me know if you're around, though, because uh, we might have one or two things to discuss. That's they're following you up. You pray them to a point where the zeal of God overwhelms them by staying focused and intense. In your demand. Focused and intense in your demand. We are going places. I said we are going places. Yeah. So every time you locate the will of God on any prayer subject, stay on it. Stay on it. Stay focused. Stay intense until you are persuaded of your, the response from him. And that way, you are not just logging religious hours. You are logging hours of answered prayers. Amen. That will be our experience from now. Yeah. Now, what that means is this. Staying on the prayer altar can release your desired healing without even praying for it. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Because you are going from strength to strength. You stand in the place of prayer and then your strength level changes and those things fighting your energy, they are disarmed. You are praying that everyone called sick in the winner's family be healed. And the things you make happen for others, you have committed him to make happen for you. Then your healing comes. You are praying for someone to be rescued from trouble and they, there you are. Your troubles are just leveled out and you can't find them anymore. The good news is this. The prayer altar is ordained to change people who are intense in their prayers. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance, not as, I, as he watched, as checking time, checking everything. As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his garment white and glistering. And a voice came from heaven, this is my beloved son, you better hear him. His level has changed. So sickness said, I'm sorry. Disease I'm sorry. Attack I'm sorry. And they leave you alone. That's what happens. On the prayer altar. Somebody excited today? Stand to your feet. Ask God for grace. To engage the prayer altar as an altar of opportunities. As an altar of change of levels. As an altar that changes people. Yes, things are changed. But your change and my change is far more important than the things that change around us. When we are changed, our level of authority changes. 
So we are in command of the things that others are praying for. Come on, receive that grace right now. 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 Prayer does not only change things. Prayer changes people. Prayer changes people. Prayer changes people. Prayer changes people. Lord, let this month be a month of dramatic changes in my life. A month of dramatic changes in my spiritual life. A month of changing levels in my life. Let it be, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big hand and please you may be seated. Let's give opportunity tonight to those who might be in our presence, or in our midst, both here in Canaan land and all of our viewing centers, who are not born again yet. New birth is a fundamental requirement for answered prayers. Without a father in heaven, you are communicating to a place where you are not known. So it's like a letter they turn back to sender. In those days with the night post, send letter to you say back to sender. This is not the address. It doesn't live here. You don't want your prayer to bounce back. You must be saved. Praise God. Praise God. You don't have an inheritance in a family. You are not a family member. It is important to become a member of the household of God before you can assess, before you can possess an inheritance. So wherever you are tonight, you want to be saved. I'd like to pray with you. Please stand to your feet. You want your sins forgiven. You want to be born again. Please stand to your feet. And remain standing, please. Jesus loves you. Stand to your feet. You want to give your life to Christ tonight. You want to be born again tonight. God bless you. Stand to your feet. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Stand to your feet right now. Now, there are people here also that need to rededicate their life to Christ. You want to rededicate your life to Christ and have uh, direct access to the Father because a broken branch is as good as dead. It's a matter of time. So wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Christ. Please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. You want to rededicate your life to Christ? God bless you. God bless you wherever you are. Get up on your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. You want to rededicate your life to Christ? Please turn and join us right now as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone standing, please come forward right here before the altar of the Lord where you'll be prayed for. Anyone else can still join us wherever you are. Join us now quickly. In all of the viewing centers, please move towards the altar area. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All of us in front, please bow your heads. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm saved. I'm justified by your blood. I am now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over you, these precious people tonight, and ask that the same grace that brought you we keep you in this race to the end. You shall make it to the end. When Christ shall appear in glory, you shall not be missing. You have the best of time on earth and eternity to match in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please open your eyes and walk this way to pass your form to those church officials. Shall we rise to our feet? Let the stewards come around the table of the Lord as we partake of this table tonight. One key mystery from the communion table is empowerment to live like Christ. His prayer life was ever focused and intense 
Therefore, the prayer altar will no longer be a playground for us. It shall be an altar of deliveries. Inexplainable but undeniable deliveries. Answers to our prayers will be from henceforth like a dream of the night. And grace to remain focused and intense in our prayers. Receive it right now from this table. As you partake of this table, every one of us shall begin to experience the Jesus order of prayer life from now. In the name of Jesus. The Jesus order of prayer life will become our experience from this moment. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. This table tonight is declared as the flesh and the blood of Jesus. And we partake of it for strength, spiritual and physical strength, for health, spiritual and physical health, and for longevity, lifelong, tireless to worship. We receive it from this table tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Please get seated and partake of the Lord's table right away. I prayed and I prayed, Lord Jesus answered me. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed and I prayed, Lord Jesus answered me. It is well with my soul, it is well with my soul. I prayed and I prayed, Lord Jesus answered me. Yeah. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed and I prayed, Lord Jesus answered me. It is well with my soul. Hey, I prayed and I prayed. Lord Jesus answered me. I prayed. I cried to my father. I prayed and I prayed. Lord Jesus answered me. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I prayed and I prayed. Lord Jesus answered me. And I prayed. I prayed and I prayed. I prayed. Lord Jesus answered, it is well, it is well, it is well. Say, I pray, then I pray, I pray, then I pray. Lord Jesus answered, and I pray to my God. I pray to my Father. I pray, I pray, then I pray. Lord Jesus answered, it is well with my soul. It is well. Say, I pray, then I pray, I pray, then I pray. Lord Jesus answered, and I pray. I pray, I pray, I pray. I pray, then I pray. Lord Jesus has had me. Hey, it is well with my soul. Ah, say, I will let go. I will let go. Jesus took me by the hand. And I will let, I will let you go. I won't let go. I won't let go. Jesus took me. Hey, say, I won't let go. Hey, say, I won't let go. I won't let go. Jesus took me by the hand. And I won't let go. I won't let go. I will never let you go. Let go. Jesus took Jesus me by the hands. I won't, I won't let go. Hey, I won't let go. No, no, I won't let go. Jesus took me by the hand. And won't let go. Won't let you go. I won't, I won't go. Let, let you go. I will never let you go. I will never. Hey, say I won't let go. I won't let go. I will never let you go. Yes, I say I won't let I won't let go until you change my story and change my level. Said I will not let you go. I will never let you go. I will never let you go. I won't let go. Hey, say I won't let go. No, no, I won't let go until you change my story. And I won't let go. I won't let you go. I will never let you go. Hey, Jesus took me back. I won't say I will never let you go. I won't let you go. I won't ever let you go. I won't let you go. Say I won't let you go. I won't let you go. Jesus took me by the hand. I won't let you go. I will never let you go. I will never let you go. It took me by the hand. Say I won't let go. I won't let go. Jesus took me. I won't let go. I will never let you go. I will let go. Jesus took me by the hands. Say, I will never let you go. I will let go. No, no. Jesus took me, took me by the hands. I will never let you go. I made up my mind. I will never let you go. It took me by the. I will never let you go. I will let go. I will never, never, no, no, no. Say, I will never let you go. I will let go. I will never let you go. 
let go. Jesus took me by the hand. I won't let go. I will never let him go. I won't let go. He took me by the hand. He took me by the hand. Jesus took me by the hand. He took me by the hand. He changed my story. I won't let go. I will never let him go. No, 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 no. He took me by the hand. I will never let you go. I will never let you go. It took me by the hand. Say, and I will let go. Lift, lift up your two hands to heaven. Bless the name of the Lord for the encounter tonight. Bless his name for the encounter tonight. It's a dawn of a new day. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. I'd like you to spend some time tonight, minimum one hour, like we said, and then put this to work. And you see how refreshing that will be to you. Focused and intense prayer session. Saying the same thing on any subject that you are so directed in those uh, prayer guidelines. I'm praying them from your heart. Don't quote one million scriptures to Jesus. He wrote it. Praise God. He said one or two, not ten, not twenty. One or two. It's not the noise, it's the intensity of heart that makes it work. And in the midst of it, you will experience a change. Yeah. Many have never had an encounter on the prayer altar. You will have it this time. Yeah. I said you will have it this time. Yeah. He will visit you this time. Yeah. He will touch you this time. Yeah. He will speak to you direct this time. You have a raw encounter with him this time. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Even when you are in a corporate meeting like we are in. Uh, just ensure your voice is hard. It's not by the noise of it. But by the focused, focusedness. And the intensity of it. You are just focused. You are intense. You are praying as if you are the only one in church. Then your voice is registered. And it can appear to you any moment. I've said that several times. He appears to you and you know that he appears to you. I mean, you, you just know. I first saw the picture of Africa at the time in a couple of prayer painting in the bottom. We were in a meeting like this early in the morning and God just opened my eyes and I saw a woman running around a huge pies of harvest. And the boss of the air, and in the midst of the meeting, I was crying. I didn't know when they finished their prayer session. I didn't know when they finished the prayer point. I was in a trance. He was showing me some bit of picture of what my assignment would be like in the future. I didn't know what it was. And I heard the word from me that I only saw in the Bible after I heard from him. You will have an encounter this time. Yeah. My wife and I were praying one time, intense, focused prayer. Stand up, take your Bible. And he opened it. Jesus opened it. I didn't flip any scripture. You will, have, you will meet God this time. Yeah. What such encounters do is to fortify your confidence. That you are not praying to an idol God who has ears he cannot hear and has eyes and he cannot see. That he responds to it. Tomorrow is the last day of this <laughs> spiritual week of emphasis. The third day is a resurrection of that day. Everything dying in your spiritual life will bounce back to life. Yeah. Everything dying in your physical system will bounce back to life. Yeah. Because one encounter is enough to clear off all the mess. Jesus is Lord. So we're waiting on the Lord again tomorrow. We gathered in here as the third day of the spiritual week of emphasis for the week. Amen. And on Saturday, we are coming to prove that God had us as we take territories for Jesus and see the kind of salvation we have never seen before. This coming Saturday, you'll be a part of it. You must be a part of it. It's to your advantage. And devote to be a part of it. Be determined to be a part of it. Don't let any funny appointment that whether you go there or not they won't know this load your life don't say i'm waiting for somebody no wait on god praise god and you will never lack great stories to tell in the name of jesus this month must bring about dramatic changes in everyone's life and that begins with you and begins 
with all of us together. In Jesus' name. For all those who have been hosting the ark of God in their homes, and that is a relocation of a major, the blessing that accrues to you remains in that house. Yeah. And in the name of Jesus, for everyone who has responded in obedience to the prophetic instruction we receive, the blessings of obedience will never cease to find expression in your life. Yeah. And what more? God will continue to manifest himself to you day and night yeah. as he has committed himself to. Whosoever has my commandment and keeps it, he loves me, I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. You will never lack his manifestation all the days of your life. Yeah. Lift up those two hands, give God thanks for the day, and look forward for grace to come down tonight and then grace you in a new way in your prayer life as things begin to change in your life. Not just things changing in response to prayers, but things changing in your system. Lift your voice and speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. From the depth of your heart as you look unto him for the outpouring of that grace. The outpouring of that grace. Lembra de que lia canto roboro koshiri ambra de que lia angarado suzia. The outpouring of that grace. Nekla de actalo subrodi amana que lia basuzo. Father, we give you thanks. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Before we share the goodness, let's take note the flyer is available for Sunday, the special healing service flyer. We can pick copies and begin to demonstrate our faith in our prayers as we begin to speak to people about Jesus and about being here on Sunday. And God will reward you in the name of Jesus. Every one of them are blessed as sequels of harvest in Jesus' name. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. From glory to glory. And from glory to glory. Congratulations.